I really do think that this country is in such a bad place uh, on many levels, politically and analytically, that we really need to find a better way. And we do think here, obviously, I wouldn't be standing here every single morning and all day long, again, if I didn't think that this was a better way. It is a better way. I'm not going to apologize for telling you that. And I'm not going to apologize for criticizing the establishment, which is clearly again, failing you like it has at every economic cycle turn. Uh, so Josephine, if you don't mind, go to slide uh, 33. Uh, just to give you the roundup on this jobs number, uh, this is part of yesterday's Global Macro Themes Deck, so I'm just gonna give you, a, a, you know, not, not gonna give you all the slides, but I'll give you enough to get you uh, going here. Uh, you could see that as you're walking off the cliff, it's called the cycle. A lot of different people uh, this morning have really talked around non-farm payrolls, but not reminded you of the historical context of it all. So if you go to the next slide, slide 34, uh, in the current macro deck, this is a friendly reminder, uh, an updated chart uh, for this morning, again, would take you even lower in rate of change terms, but again, the cycle. So you, you need to absolutely understand and have studied the labor cycle to have any opinion. There's absolutely no value in reading to me 156,000 in jobs. Uh, in as much as there's no value in getting sucked into the anomaly that was the July jobs report of allegedly 275, which got revised down to 252. That was the highest one, the most surprising one. It was an anomaly. What's not an anomaly is that when the cycle peaks, 100% of the time, it slows to 0% growth. So that's why you're starting to see a lot of people in the popular press go, oh, wow, the average is lower. Oh, every time we have a jobs report, the, the forecast is lower. Yeah, because we're going down the back side of a very obvious sign curve. Now, let's get into the components of it. This is actually the most important uh, point of the story that I was looking for in, in terms of an update. It's the average hours worked, okay? So if you look at slide 35, no change, okay? So no change, the average, uh, the average what was it? 34.4 uh, hours worked, okay? So you know, people are working less hours. I don't know how you can't understand that unless you're not looking at the rate of change, it's difficult, very difficult, I'd say borderline impossible for a workforce, i.e. the U.S. workforce, with declining productivity to increase output by working less or sitting on their couch. This is not, again, this is not good. Look at the next chart, next chart. Again, I said a couple things there. Again, you have to think about the rate of change in jobs growth, which is clearly slowing now. Everybody can see that. Uh, you can see that hours worked are falling actually quite precipitously. And then look at productivity. I mean, we're in the 1970s in terms of productivity. Yes, you haven't seen jobless claims fire up, but in the 1970s, you didn't see it fire up by 1973, 1974, and then whammo. Uh, I was born in 1975, by the way. And then all of a sudden, the jobs market got a lot worse because people started getting fired because you can't run an economy with less hours worked, less jobs growth, and less productivity. Because what do you get? Look at this, slide 37, okay? Let's just keep going through the analysis here. Non-farm payrolls go down, hours worked go down, productivity is going down, three straight quarters of the worst productivity since the 1970s, hello, Jimmy Carter, and output, i.e. GDP, is down. Now, if that's not a picture of what's happened in the U.S. economy since the cycle peaked last year, I don't know what is. 